welcome the Full House, a music and dance quiz in several sort acts where two teams fight it out for supremacy here in the sumptuous surroundings of the cross room at the Royal Opera House. Our first team captain tonight is an actor, a writer, an opera, a musical director and producer. He's Simon Callow. Simon's teammate choreographed the award-winning Adventures in Motion Pictures production of Swan Lake. He's Matthew Bourne. On the other side, please welcome team captain Mr. John Sessions, and tonight John is aided and abetted by the musical director of the Royal Ballet. Please welcome Andrea Quinn. <laughs> also joining us tonight and taking a break from the concert platform is our resident pianist David Owen Norris, who will be testing our team savvy with a musical conundrum later in the show. So let's get into the swing with our first round, Musical Prelude. In this, you'll hear a short burst of the opening bars of various pieces of music. They might be from an opera or a ballet. Well, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to carry on with the music stop. I just want you to name the piece of music and the composer. Simon, I'll start with you. No, but not right country, am I? Right country? Are you going to help me? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right country. Um, right country. Oh, I ah, Castaquiri. Yes. Yes, and probably then from Guyana. Uh, uh, oh, no. no, from uh, the other one. The other one. The other one. Spartacus. Yes, I think probably only one point there is from Spartacus Theodosio, of which, of course, is better known to most people as the. Uh, theme tune from the Anedian line of the 70s thing. Now, John, put your ear to the ground. I'm the Anedian line. Oh, well, well, you know right. <laughs> Put your ear to the ground. See if you can identify this. That was the opening of the Rite of Spring. Well, it's actually the front one. <laughs> There's a French like to say, um, by Igor Stravinsky, as we all know, looks like Jiminy Cricket. And, um, and as you probably know, that, that, that the, the choreographer, uh, for the Fouquet, and Stravinsky, and Nijinsky, and all of them, they all leapt out the back window of the Theatre de Champs Elysees on its opening night. Because it opened very, very badly. <laughs> Matthew, what do you make of it? <laughs> Beginning to sound familiar towards the end there. Um, it's beginning to sound like something else. Uh, yeah, I very well know this is value music by this person. I had a, 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 a little Prokofiev in there, I felt. You did, correctly. But I'm not sure what this piece is. Ah, oh, okay. Finding the name for me. Well, I, 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 it can't possibly be Cinderella because you no. would know it if it was. It sounds remarkably like her, the end of it. But not but like any not. part of it yeah. that I know. No, it's Prodigal Son, which oh, was right. the last yeah. one that he did for the Argo mm -hmm. So I think just one point there. Finally, Andrea, what piece of music starts like this? So at the end of that first round, Simon and Matthew have two, and Andrea and John have four. <laughs> Let's press those ears and give your eyes a chance now. For this act, we've delved into the BBC archives and pulled up some classics. I'm going to show each team a clip from a ballet, 
And keep your eyes peeled as I'll be asking you a question about the clip afterwards. Simon Matthews, here's your clip. This extract comes from Act One of an earlier Royal Ballet production of Capellia, shown on BBC television at Christmas 1964, Merle Park. You know that was Mel Parker's singing there, and Christopher Gable was Frank. The key point, what is the main change about the way we see this ballet today as opposed to the way it was first performed in 1870? Hmm. I think it's, it's something to do with choreography, I would have thought. Is no, it, it's no. more to do with casting. Casting? Mm. I think I'll throw it open. Yeah. Any ideas? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the original, the role of France was danced by a woman. Okay. Oh, right. 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 well, no more for anybody there. <laughs> <laughs> As John earns there, this is a, a clip from Matthew's award-winning version of Swan Lake, so ah. don't look too closely at him in case any reaction um, registers. Just take a look at the video. Right, so the key point, can you tell me at least four of the awards that the Adventures in Motion oh, Picture <laughs> production of Swan Lake has won? Uh, the Evening Standard Award. Yep. The Tony Award. Yes. Uh, Laurence Olivier. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And there was a. Uh, can we go for different people? The, uh, you can, the, actually, the, because one of those comes with several, with several passages. So. Yes, there were Tony Awards, because yeah. it, it was spread across mm -hmm. Best Designer and, mm -hmm. uh, and the Best. Choreography. Uh, yes. Best New Production. Yes, best I think production. so. I think, you, did, you did Valley, actually, <laughs> weren't you? So at the end of that round, we say that uh, Simon and Matthew have two points, whereas Andrea and John have six. <laughs> Let's cross over now to a man taking a break from the concert platform, our resident pianist, David Owen Norris. The act is called Medley Maker, and David's going to play each team a selection. I want you to guess as many of the six pieces of dance music that are made up in that selection. Over to you, David. Thank you. I'm going to begin my meddling with uh, John and Andrea. And there's one or two ballets here. You might not actually know the ballet, but I think you might recognize the style of the composer. And once you've got the composer, it's easy. But off I go. <laughs> Well, Nutcracker was the first one. Do you have yeah. to know which dance it was? Yes, it was the uh, Chinese dance. It was the Chinese yeah. dance, yes. Then the Stravinsky Firebird. But we, uh, we, there was another one before. There's one yeah. in the middle. Yeah. And that's the defective middle harmonisation. If I did the harmonisation of the same tune at the beginning, then I bet you know. Right, yes. I do know it. What is it? Too bad. <laughs> Say? <laughs> what is it? It's, uh, Schubert, 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 yeah. Rosamunde. Rosamunde. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you a half credit for that. 
Kavinsky you were talking about. Firebird. 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 And yeah, then... Copy of Roman and Julia. Montague's yeah. and Capulet. And the next one we weren't sure of, I thought it was Bartle. Uh, it was a bit more mellifluous than Bartok, really. It was sort of common chords that changed at the bottom, but not at the top. Mm. 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 That's a very typical chord of that composer. Now, it's based in Britain, so what can it have been? A ballet. A ballet? But, uh, the Prince of the Pagodas? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You see? Um, you know more, really. Oh. He doesn't do mellifluous very often, though, does he? <laughs> for Andrew Britain, God rest his soul. Depends what he is, Tim. Generally sounds like cheese wire being stretched out. So anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, darling, Andrea. Last one was Chopin. Yes, indeed. And it must have been Les Philippines. It must indeed have been Les Philippines. <laughs> it was one of his preludes. Well, you needed just a little bit of prompting there, so I think I'm going to give you five before I go on to Simon and Matthew with their medley. <laughs> I'll turn my attention to Simon and Matthew. Six more. And again, there's one that you might not know, but you'll recognise the style, I think, and then it's easy. You look confident there, confident smile. Well, the first one was Petrushka, I think. Yes. Stravinsky. And then? Um, Nutcracker, Sugar Plum, Variation. Yep. Three, Swan Lake. Swan Lake, sure. Act One, Water, Think So. Well, because they all <laughs> I blur. I do get confused, so they me. do blur into for me a bit. A little. Quite confident, <laughs> well, certainly, yes. And then? Okay, stick it. Mm. Think adolescent flute players. Think it's not the dance of the blessed spirit. It is, it oh, is. Oh, right, right, uh, sorry. I didn't know. Uh, from uh, Bosseo, of Gluck. Of Gluck, yes, absolutely. And then that fierce one. The right, you think, of spring. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Maybe right. Uh, it, it was very similar, actually. You, you were thinking of. Uh, similar chords, but um, maybe just a little bit more musicianly than. They've got a shape. But uh, think barbaric. Uh, could you play them again? Think, yes, I can. Think barbaric. <laughs> Miraculous Mandarin? Indeed, by Barkov. And that's the entrance of the Miraculous Mandarin himself. And then finally. Place to a bead again. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Another Chopin. 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 And so you get full marks of six. So, uh, <laughs> well done. Thank you, David. Well, that does mean, according to our very sophisticated computations at the end of this round, Simon and Matthew has 12, and John and Andrea has just one point ahead for 13. <laughs> so, moving on now, I'll forgive you for thinking we've gone down market with our next round, Tabloid Tales. I'm going to ask a member of each team to read their teammates a news cutting. We can pass that piece to John. And I want the other one to tell me which ballet the news report refers to. So, John, can you read out both the headline and the report for Andrea? I'm hiding it from Andrea, of course. <laughs> <laughs> ghost Girl Tempted Me. A young man claims he spent the night with the ghost of an ex girlfriend. We danced all night, he told us. An anonymous source revealed that the young girl had committed suicide after she discovered the love rat was too time in her. To think she would want to dance from the, beyond the grave with him beats me, 
said the source, he's deluding himself, it's because of him she's there in the first place. <laughs> This is indeed splendid key point, marvellous. Simon, now, if you could pass that over to Simon. Uh, could you read out both the headline and the report for Matthew to guess which ballet that might be? <laughs> Cross dressers exposed on naval frigate. <laughs> uh, a Royal Navy cross dressing ring has been secretly uncovered. In a shocking discovery, some of the frigate's male crew have turned out to be women. The frigate's captain said they were good men, but there were times when I thought some of them were trying to come on to me. <laughs> the Royal Navy refused to comment, and an inquiry is underway. <laughs> I know it sounds like something I would do. <laughs> um, <laughs> will, do. will do, now, having heard that. Um, it's not terribly familiar. Is it? It's not Pineapple Pole, it is, is it? It is. Cranko. Cranko, yes. The choreographer. The music is by Sullivan. That's right. That right? Absolutely, by Sir Sullivan. Two points. <laughs> uh, that now means that the points are 14 to Simon and Matthew and 15 to John and Andrea. <laughs> More ballet clips for you. This is a team round, so you can confer. Simon and Matthew, your first. Here's an extract from the Royal Ballet production of Winter Dreams. It's the Pas de Deux with Dusty Bustle and Iris Machamedo. Which one do you wish it? It's Chekhov, isn't it? It's, it's the Three Sisters. It is. Mm. Two points. Well done. <laughs> An extract now for John and Andrea. This was shown in the summer dance season on BBC Two last year, and the Ballet du Grand Théâtre de Genève. <laughs> It is performance of the music and also the choreographer. And the staff of the Rolling Stones thing, Willie Dixon's Little Red Whiskers. No, that's, no, no, that's fine. That's got your point. Has it? That's got your point. But who is the choreographer? The choreographer. <laughs> it's not Twilight Sharp. It's not. It's not Twilight no. Sharp. I'm afraid it was Crystal Brewster. Just oh. one point there. Which means that at the oh. end of this round, we have. A draw for both teams. <laughs> and we go now to the final round, which is a mixture of topics which I'll put to each team in turn until we run out of time. And as it's a quick fire round, if you can't get it, then it goes straight across to the other side. So, Simon and Matthew, first of all, which British composer wrote a ballet inspired by Czech? And what was it called? Oh. Chess. 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 Two points. What is a Krakowiak? A witch. A Krakowiak. I haven't the faintest idea. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, neither have you faintest idea? Yeah, that's a joint answer, I think. We okay. haven't the faintest uh, Any idea? Polish national dance. Yes, excellent. Oh, two points. Oh. Which Stravinsky ballet called for a cast of young elephants? What was the piece called? Who was the choreographer? Joseph Falter. And the choreographer was Bellon. Two points. Yes. Well done. <laughs> John and Andrea, by what name is Arthur Wood? Barwick Green, better known. Oh, Barwick Green. A well-known tune. 
that tune. Would you like an audio, please? I'm afraid so, yes. Well, you'll get it now. Now, how are you doing now? Oh, oh, you've got it now. I think it's a tune for coronation. No, I'm sorry, it's yeah. the archers. <laughs> Send it, but I it think is the archers. Only yeah. one point, I think. The final score is John and Andrea Hazard But the winners for this edition are Matthew and Simon with 22. <laughs> So congratulations, and after your musical exertions, you'll be taking home tonight a full house comfort kit to see you through those dark winter months. Your kit is stuffed full with a swan lake feather pillow, a bowl of nuts, and to top off for a cracking night in, a pair of silver-coloured nutcrackers. <laughs> but before David plays us out with a ballet medley for viewers at home to identify the various pieces of music, I would like to thank my willing and able guests, Andrea Quinn and John Sessions, Simon Callow and Matthew Vaughan. And for me, Francine Stock, your musical chair, good night. <laughs>